Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Mac Merlin stream. Hope everyone is doing great tonight. Let's see who's on. I see an Uncle Peppy, Iowa 501, Tao Osu, Oshika, Dr. Nucleus, Nefert. Who else is here? Mocha Keeves, Domo, Le Domo Legato. <laughs> there we go. I got your name right there. Jay Humpert, Airfire, and Big Daddy Tuna. Thanks, guys, for joining in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So yeah, as you guys can see from the stream title down below, we are unboxing the Jelly Epoch, a upcoming 75% keyboard that will be sold in stock starting the 17th, I believe, what? 17th is this Saturday. So yeah, um, good luck everyone. Apparently there's gonna be about 700 units total. So tonight, just to build up some hype, we will be unboxing the board. But before that, usually Tuesdays are my programming streams in which I, you know, uh, get a board into QMK or into VIA, at the same time partaking in some port. But since we're not doing any kind of porting tonight, I and I do want to drink, we're drinking something else. We're drinking something else. Let's see, let's turn on some music here. Actually, let's, let's turn on the jazzy stream, since I, I am still drinking. Something else is new on this channel. <laughs> Something else is new on this channel. As you guys can see, there is a um, a new dust mat in play. Um, currently demoing this. I've been working with Zion Studios. Zion Studios is a mechanical keyboard company located in my home country of the Philippines. And we've been trying out a few dust mats. Like, hopefully we'll get some Mac Merlin items out there, Mac Merlin items for sale in the near future. So yeah, this is it. This is it. This is one of the designs. As you can see, it's a, you know, wizard hat on the very left here. Looks looks a lot more colorful. Quite like it. I have two, two, two others, which we are deciding which one works best. So we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, tonight we are drinking Perry. Look at that. This is the first time I've ever drank Perry. Um, it's actually quite similar to a pear cider. And I was quite curious as to what the difference is between the two. What is the difference between a cider and a sherry? I mean, and a Perry, I mean. Apparently a cider is made from concentrate, whereas a Perry is made from actual fruit juice. So I'm like, oh, never knew that. Never even tried it before either. So I'd like to try it tonight for the first time. Let me open it away from my desk mat. <laughs> yeah, and the board in front of me that you guys are seeing is my Sirius 60. Someone on a stream this Sunday was asking about it and I'm like, you know what? I haven't typed on that board for such a long time. So I figured I'd pull it out today and happily type away. So here we go, my first try of Perry. No, oh, it's actually a lot clearer than I thought it would be. I was expecting a darker, a darker color liquid. Oh, that's really good. Wow, okay. All right, that is really good. I'm gonna try and savor this so I don't finish it all in one day. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Quacker Clack subscribing for three months, currently on a one month streak. Thank you. Thank you so very much for your support. Let's see, all right. Well, now that I have a beverage, I I can proceed with the unboxing. So here we go, let me pull out the box. Here we go. Um, normally, I unbox from the shipping container, but I got so excited today, got so excited today that I was like, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna take it out of the shipping container, pull it out like this. And for the rest of the day, I kept staring at it being like, oh, should I just unbox it now and just like rebox it as, as like nice as I can? But I honestly really wanted to showcase my initial reactions to make them as genuine as possible, right? So here, um, so so the container, so the so the shipping box basically was the same size as this, and it did have Owl Lab logos on it. But this is this is the this is the internals on it. So yeah, let's begin the unboxing. But yeah, this is what it looks like. Owl. Owl Labs, very beautiful packaging. Yeah, what does it say there? It says hot swap nuts, are soldered, perfect. Owl Labs, Jelly Epoch, cool. There we go. 
Very pretty container. I really like well-packaged boards. Sarah, oh hey Sarah, thanks for joining in. Sarah is actually the Owl Labs correspondent. So if you have any questions, be sure to ask. I will try to answer them as best as I can as well while I unbox this. Like I'm just learning more about this board as well. So we'll see as we go along. What is this? Oh, this is the plate. Okay, nice. What is Jelly Epoch? Some kind of candy. This is the Jelly Epoch. You know, the Jelly Epoch it is a... Yeah, I briefly talked about it at the beginning, but let's just show the Geek Hack page again. Basically, it is a 75% keyboard, 75% layout keyboard with a unique gasket mounting system. And it is an in-stock unit starting this, this Saturday, April 17th. There will be about 700 units total, priced at a little under 400 bucks. Right, so that's what we're unboxing tonight. Jelly Epoch, Jelly Time. Let's go look at this. There we go. This is the plate. This is a polycarb plate, if I'm not mistaken. Interesting, they've got some flex cuts right here too. Right there, right there, and one under, or four. Four over here. Yeah, this is, it's, it's a very matte finish. It's not shiny at all. It's not even, it's completely clouded. It almost looks like there's like a, sticker on it, but it's not. This is actually how it looks. This is how it looks. Ooh, there's the PCB right there. Okay, um, based on the Geek Hack post, I was actually expecting the PCB to be red. See that? I know that, that that's just a render, but here we go, here we go. Yeah, I was expecting the PCB to be red. But apparently, I have a green one. A green PCB. Interesting. What's different between the green and the red? I don't know. Here we go. Um, this board comes with two circuit boards. One is the main board itself, where you put the switches on and where the microcontroller is. But there's also a daughter board. You can see this board has four flex cuts. I mean, five, one, two, three, four, five, all the way through, giving it a very soft typing experience. Let's see the microcontroller. Oh, it's an STM, I believe. STM32. It's an ARM microcontroller. Awesome. Very good. That's the way I like it. That's the way I like it. Lots. Lots of different layouts supported, is exactly what I want to see. Okay, 7U supported, 7U spacebar, very good. I like that. I like that a lot. So, I guess I would be curious, because like both the plate and the PCB have flex cuts, and the board is also gasket mounted. I wonder... Oh, and, and the plate itself is like polycarb. So I wonder if this will be too soft of a typing experience for me. We don't know. Maybe. Sarah says the initial version has the wrong bottom row. We redid the bottom row. Ah, okay. Okay. So I have the fixed PCB. So when I first heard of this board, um, it reminded me of this very popular saying, this very popular quote. So before I unbox the actual body, just want to share it with, with you guys. Um, made, made famous by, by a group of six women. The quote is, I don't think you're ready for this jelly. <laughs> a thousand points to anyone who can complete that quote. Egg roll says, Destiny's Child, cause my body is too bootylicious for you. There we go. <laughs> That's it. That is it. <laughs> you guys all get a thousand points. Points to what? I don't know. <laughs> there we go. This is the body right here. And you guys are correct. There is a slight green tint to it. There we go. Look at that. Look at that.
Let's see, hopefully stuff doesn't fall out when I turn it around. There we go, jelly. Okay, I really like that it's not like super shiny, so I don't put too many fingerprints on it. And right now I'm touching it. Not seeing fingerprints show up. That's good. Um, I do have to say though, that I'm not a big fan of the jelly logo. Kind of makes a, a very good looking board a little tacky. But the good thing is, you can't see this because this is like on the bottom, right? Look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I just got hit by a bunch of subscribers. <laughs> Here, let's see. Oh boy. Oh boy. Holy cow. Uh, all right. Thank you very much to Brundon Grabe, Mike PT, Elisa Tempella. Kaisio, Kira Shuffer, DJ Jello, Godfather, Jesus Figueroa, Francesco Gilun, Incognito, Escarito, Raihan, Koa, Harrell. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, guys. Thanks for all your support. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let me pull out. Can I even this this come out easily? Yes, it does. That comes out super easily. You didn't need to take out the board, but this is the internal dampener. It sits between the plate and the PCB. Um, not quite. I don't think this is a silicon one. This feels very much like a poron dampener. Oogtug subscribed with Prime. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now, okay. So I do have a question about this. I wonder if this can fit in a TX case. Hold on. Let me grab a TX case. All right, this might actually fit. So this is a TKL sized TX case. Yep, looks like it's gonna fit. Boom. Yep, it fits. Great, I have a case for this already. Excellent. Yep, that's good, good stuff. Okay, excellent. Let's see, could we get a close-up of the white greenish? Yes, you may. Here, let's bring it up as close to it as I can without it losing focus or being out of frame. But here we go. That's it right there. Now I'm looking at my at my monitor right now. Um, what you're seeing on screen, hopefully you've got a good monitor, not that you should be looking and comparing colors through your monitor, but if you have a relatively color correct one, like mine, what I'm seeing quite matches what I'm seeing with my own eyes. Yeah, there it is. You can definitely agree that there's a tint of green there. Okay, so uh, if you guys look on the Geek Hack page, you'll see that this is a very novel um, gasket mounting strategy. Instead of your typical, here, let's see. They have a picture of the gaskets. There we go, see? That's what the gaskets look like. It's kind of like what you guys can see in my hand over here, right there. So how they work is you take the plate and you insert them into the gaskets like so. And then these gaskets then fit onto the case. Right, this is a very different way of gasket mounting. So the reason that they're doing this is number one, if you've ever built a gasket mount board before which you've had to stick the gaskets on yourself, what ends up happening is if you're not completely careful, if you don't have the right tools, you might end up having gaskets that are like skewed and all that. While that doesn't affect how the board works per se, if you had like a polycarb case, you would absolutely see it. And that would probably annoy you. Completely annoy you. So yeah, by by doing it this way, you won't have to worry about that. All right, let's try and take it apart, shall we? Okay, all right, it looks like the way you take it apart is by these side screws. So short story, when I first saw this board on the Geek Hack page, I thought these were actually headphone jacks. 
<laughs> that they were headphone jacks. And interesting, these look to be using the star-shaped screwdriver heads. Those are T6s, I believe. T6s or larger. Let's pull it out. Okay, so I'm just gonna say this off the bat. Um, the fact that you need these specialized tools, it's gonna prevent like a lot of newcomers into the hobby to really appreciate this board. Like, if you've been building boards for a long time, if you've been in this hobby for a long time, you should have some kind of, you know, I, I fix it kit. But if you're new, you might you might not have this. Might not have this, right? So that could be an issue for some people. All right, uh, I think, yeah, we got both, all four screws out. Any others to come out? Uh. That, does that just come off? Feels like it does. There it is. There we go. Oh my word. Wow, okay. Look at that weight. That's where the daughter board is, interesting. Okay, that's annoying. I have to change my bit again. So no more, no more star shape. Let's get to another one. Here we go, this is the daughter board. Um, let's see. I'm gonna look for ESD protection here. Usually the ESD protection circuit is really close to the USB-C port. And what I'm looking at right here, this chip labeled Z1, looks to be an ESD protection chip. But let me just verify that with the... Um, Sarah, do you know if this board has, has ESD protection? And I'd be very curious. It is. Yes, okay. There we go. ESD protection. Very cool. Okay, let's put that daughter board to the side here. And now let's um, take off the rest. So Sarah said not to remove these screws. Okay, so I will not be removing these screws. Though it looks like I need to remove these four over here. Okay. And looks like I need to change screw heads again. Okay, so so far you need three types of screws of um, tools in order to remove all four, uh, all. That's kind of bad. <laughs> it's kind of giving me Jane vibes. With the Jane, I needed to use different screw heads as well. Okay. So far, my biggest complaint is having to change the heads all the time. There we go. Yeah, if you guys want a better, better look, at the white color, here it is. This is it right there. And that is the bottom of the board right here. Okay. Yeah, here we go. This is the foam at the bottom. Also made out of Poron from like how it feels. Very good. Can I use this same head? Oh, thank God. Yes, I can. Okay, so, so far, three different heads to take apart the board. Oh my gosh. Ringo Leon is gifting 20 subs? Dude, thank you. Holy crap. Dude, thank you for, thank you for your generosity. And congratulations to Simone. Just Just Shay Got Goodies Clone MJ Game Nullified Tofrill DJ Sato Vyaz Idiot Exception Kim Yetsu The Slick Rick Not Panos Drag LX Darkle Minty Boy Bill Ninety Two Bills King <gasps> Moon Operator Stavindo Congratulations guys and make sure you say thank you Thank you very much Ringo Ringo Leon Hopefully I pronounced your name correctly. <laughs> What color is the mainframe? It's gray. It's the kind of gray with a hint of blue in it. Mm. 
Okay, that guy's not willing to come out. There we go. Zero 98. Does the hot swap plate have like screws so you can screw the plate in uh, the um, PCB into the plate? Sarah says yes. Ah, okay. So with that being said, the hot swap will feel a little bit more, um, will feel stiffer. All right, there are all the screws out. We can remove that middle frame. Middle frame comes out. Very cool. No, I can already tell that I'm gonna love this board. I can already tell. Just like the way that it looks, like really, like my only qualms on it so far is I really wish that rightmost column had a little bit more spacing in between it and the jelly logo. Those are really the only two. <laughs> Big Walruses Redeemed Hydrate, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Will the hot swap be more stiff? I am anticipating it to be more stiff simply because you have to screw the PCB into the plate. Um, Sarah, quick question. Quick question. Has there been any tests done in which you don't put all of the jelly gaskets in? Like maybe you just do the ones on the side, but you leave the two or the four center ones ungasketed? Because that would essentially make make the plate just sitting in mid-air, right? Has anyone tried doing that? Like, I'd be very curious. Very curious to see if that changes, like, the typing feel at all. Or, like, just do it there, 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 and there. Who knows? Worth doing for science, yeah. Because essentially that would put the plate... This guy right here... It's already quite flexy. That's true. That's... That's very true. So essentially you would do... Do that. The plate would go in like that, right? So you would... If you just left these four ungasketed, it would just be hovering in midair with no contact to any material at all. So yeah, that might... Might improve the sound, might not. We don't know, but I will... Definitely try that. And that is the strength of the gasket, right? You can actually experiment with it because this one is not sticky. You can take it off. You can put it on as you please. You don't have to commit. You don't have to commit at all. So that's perfect. That's perfect. I will definitely be doing that test. On my last build, on my last personal build, which was the Think 6.5 V2, the plate that I received was a little too tight and cause some switches to be impossible to put in. So let's test that really quick on this plate here. Let's just test that really quick. What's this? What switch? Random switch. It is a NK silk. Perfect. This is the one that got stuck in the FR4 plate. So let's see if this one will do the same. Oh wow, that was really easy fitting. See guys, that's so super easy. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, very easily removed, very easily inserted. That's with the silks. Let's see, I forget. Were there other plate materials available or or was it just polycarb? Plates, PC plate goes well with gas gasket mounts. Just like BBQ and beer. So yeah, it comes with the kit. BBQ and beer, you have officially made me hungry. Alu plate will be offered extra, it has better rigidity, so we believe leaf spring would be a better approach to give it more flexiness. Cool. Sura, do you are you guys planning on releasing the plate files at all? Because I'm sure many people would love to do a FR4, Palm, who knows? Brass, stainless steel. Sura says yes, perfect. Oh yeah, earlier someone was asking if you could remove the tab. Looks like that tab is indeed removable. Right there. 
Here, just to show you that it's indeed removable, let's actually take it out. There we go. Okay, yeah, you can definitely remove that logo, that little tab. But then if you removed it, it's there's going to be like just this little hole there. I think I will keep it on. I like the look. I like the look. So I I will I will keep it on. Yeah, I think I definitely like the tab more, but would have preferred if there if there was no tab. Anonymous subscribing with Prime. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lots of subscribers today, guys. Thanks for all your support. Let's see. Jay Hey Jossa says, can you keep it off? All builds I watched has it on. But here, here's the thing. If I keep it off, it's not like I can easily put it back on. I still have to take apart the entire board just to do it. Right? So yeah, maybe, maybe in a future, in a future revision, make it easier to remove the tag, right? Someone can sell a flush tag. Yeah, I could take like a what? I could take like a grinding iron, just grind it on stream. <laughs> no, man. Yeah, I kind of like having it on there. I like having it on there. Make it magnetic. Now that's an idea. That is a very good idea. Make it magnetic, make it... Make it a rotary encoder that's on the side. How about that? All right, just turn it volume up, volume down. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, I'm going to put this board back together. Now that I'm looking at it, is there a way to reset this PCB? Oh, there we go. SW1, I'm assuming that's a switch. Is that a switch? Can't really tell. Yeah, this is not going to be a board that you can easily reset. I've seen a lot of um, new boards these days in which the reset button is positioned right where the spacebar is. So all you have to do to physically reset the board is to take out your spacebar and press the button that's right there. In this case, you're still going to have to take apart a large part of the board before you can even access this button. So make sure you've got a reset key on your, on your key map and you also have boot magic enabled. If, you, if, you, if you're going to use QMK or VIA here. Gamut says, don't some board. Yeah, um, those are software solutions, right? So both boot magic in which you hold down a key and plug in the board and like having a reset key on your layer are both software solutions, right? So what happens if your firmware is borked, which is usually why you would want to flash your board, right? How would you reset your board? You need a reset key, right? And this is not a, it doesn't look like this is a board you can easily reset that way. Yeah, Sarah says we have one. It's right there, right? But you still have to take apart the board in order to get to it. Interesting. So I'm looking at this. I have no clue what these are. Sura, do you know what these are? Minutes, more like seconds. That's the stab shims. Oh, okay. The stab shims. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. I'll probably not use these. Well. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I'll I'll go do 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 some tests. One point two versus regular one point five. Hmm. I wonder. Have you done any tests to see if any rattle is is some um, introduced there? There you go. All right. Um. So. 
what? We've been having this stream up for a little over an hour. Um, just wanted to summarize some of my own thoughts about this. This is absolutely the first time I've ever opened up this board. Um, I have not watched any review or typing test on it. All the information that I have received is through conversations with Sira and through reading this Geek Hack page. So everything you guys saw tonight was really my genuine opinions, genuine reactions to to opening up this board. And I think what I said earlier still still applies. Number one, number one, absolutely love how it looks. This is definitely my type of aesthetic. My my only issue is with the layout. I would like to have that rightmost column, the one that sits over here. I, I would love to have it spaced out a little more just because I just know when I reach for that backspace key, I'll end up pressing the key next to it. So yeah, for a future edition, I would love to have that. Um, number two, I'm not a big fan of this logo, Jelly logo. I actually would have preferred if they had the Owl Labs logo on it. Let's see, do I have a... Here we go, let's do this. Here we go, here is the box that it came in. Here's the box that, that it came in. Um, I would have preferred if it had this logo actually. This one looks pretty, pretty amazing. Alan wants a typing test. Typing test, okay. Talk, 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 talk. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Well, let's see. Other, other stuff. Um, oh yeah, so taking apart the whole board. Taking apart the whole board requires three different screw tips, which, you know, for someone like me who has built a lot of boards and who practically builds a board every week um, and who has the correct tools, that's not a problem. But for people new to the hobby and want to get in on this board, um, you'll have to invest in other tools, including a, I think it, I think Sarah recommended a T8, T8 star bit. And then there were two other hex bits right here. I, f I forgot the size, but if you guys look at the Geek Hack page, which I will link back in chat right here, you can see all of the screw sizes and all that. So basically, so far from a unboxing experience, that's my take. Um, lots of screws, lots of different screw sizes. Like I can understand why they use different bits, but at the same time for an end user that might be more complicated and might be more confusing. Right? Stuff like that. Those are the three things. Three things that I am a little bit concerned about. Anyway, guys, um, I think it's about time to end the stream. Uh, as I said, I'll be I'll be building this board. I'll actually be building this board on Thursday, um, same time, 7:30 p.m. PST. We'll be building it with KS3s. Um, hopefully, it will only last an hour and a half. Especially since I know how everything goes together now, I won't have to second guess myself. But if you guys are interested in this board, if you guys are interested in this board, check out the Geek Hack page. This is a board. This is a board that will be going live, not as a group buy, but as an in-stock item. Yes, read that correctly. It is an in-stock, first-come, first-serve, with seven with 700 total units. Uh, price will be less than $400. It'll be starting April 17th, this coming Saturday, 3 p.m. PDT. So yeah, make sure if you want this board to join in during that time. I do expect this to go very quick. Unfortunately, um, honestly, I don't know a way around that. If your internet is slow, if you're slow at typing, if you, I, I guess the best thing you can do is make sure, um, let's see, I'm um, Sira. Um, do you guys, do, do you guys accept PayPal payments or is it just regular? Like, do, do you do PayPal? Do you do Google pay? Do you do, um, how, how are you guys taking payments? Because I figure if it's PayPal, if it's Google Pay, or if it's any of those popular ones, so make sure you're logged in already. Make sure you have your 
your address correct. If if needed, take your address, put it on a in, in like a text form so you can copy and paste it very easily. So yeah, you know. Sarah says, please use PayPal, guys. There we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah, make sure you're logged into your PayPal. Um, what I've done in the past in order to win first come first serves like this is I I have a let's see let's see if I can find it. I don't bot. I don't do any of that stuff just because I don't think that's very fair. But I do use this. I use this this website called time.is. It tells you the exact time that you have, right? And, and it even tells you the difference from real time. So I use that to, to determine when I can join a buy of sorts, right? So, you know, lots of ways to, to get your own. So good luck, everyone. Good luck. <laughs> anyway, once again, this was the unboxing of the Jelly Epoch by Owl Labs. Tune in on Thursday for the build stream, 7.30 p.m. Hope you guys have a good rest of your Tuesday evening, wherever you are. Good rest of your week, and I'll catch you then. All right, guys. See you when I see you. Goodbye.